absolutely love to adventure, to explore, see new places, have new experiences, be out in the wild. But I've never really been surrounded by too many people that share the same appetite for it as I do, or willingness to actually make it happen. So this year, mid this year or a few months ago, I decided that enough was enough. I was missing out. I felt like I was missing out on, on too many experiences. So I bit the bullet and I hit the road on my own for a solo adventure. And despite the anxiety and the stress, I didn't want to go in a sense all the way up. I mean, I wanted to and I didn't want to all the way up until I hit the road. And once I had hit the road, man, like, I mean, I just had the best time. Like, I was humping tunes, singing along, feeling free as a bird. Like, life was good. And it opened up a whole new world for me, a whole new world of exploration and freedom. Not only, like, um, literally, metaphorically, like, physically, mentally, it was awesome. Anyway, I've been feeling like it'd be nice to start documenting some of these trips, share them with some people. I've had many people say to me that they're inspired by the way that I can just go and have these adventures on my own. And so I thought, based on that response, maybe some people would like to see a little bit, have a little bit of an insight into what it's like. So that said, here we are on the road. I'm heading down to Misty Mountain, uh, just behind Yukai in New South Wales, where there's a little average at the moment, but hopefully it'll dry out. Um, just a single night, but it should be fun. Made it. As you can hear, didn't get lucky with the weather. <laughs> it is terrible. But I managed to score myself one of these shelters. So we are on. I have camped on this hill before with my homies and the view that way is usually really, really good. Usually. Well, the good news is the view, that view that I was showing you a minute before, well, trying to show you a second ago, it's turned up. The gods have been kind. Might be time for a walk. It really is just so magical to be able to come out here and watch time slow down. Time just, excuse my French, fucks off these days. It, it just seems to slip through your fingers. The tighter you grab onto it, the faster it goes. And I don't know about anyone else but for me when I come out here into nature camping where I'm you know usually away from technology although anyway um yeah I don't know it's like a big deep breath of fresh air and everything just slows down and you can just be present and make fire and cook food and read a book and go for a walk and look at, you know, God's work, so to, so to speak. It's quite something.
I still get anxiety. Don't get me wrong. You know, going away by yourself is never comfortable. It's scary. And I get lonely sometimes while I'm out here. But in my experience, the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks and the growth available from spending time alone and being comfortable with your yourself as your sole form of company is I think valuable onwards This place is all steep climbs. Whew. So good though, bloody gorgeous. Come on, let's hope that this path, ah, oops, was the right one. This way, at least I chose the right path. More steep. <laughs> This is gorgeous, beautiful place, crazy track, uh, an adventure. I wouldn't have had this at home on the couch. Jeez, this is gnarly. I've got to see how steep ooh, that is from here, but it's very steep and I am in slides. I'm known for that. <laughs> it's more fun. No risk, no reward, right? <laughs> and back to Misty Mountain campsite four. My camp's up there. I don't know if you can see, maybe just. And uh, yeah, that was a good walk. Tip top. Reckon there's any crocs in there? Been watching too much wild croc territory, haven't I? <laughs> Look what this idiot forgot to turn off before he left. <laughs> One of the reasons that I actually wanted to come out here this weekend, aside from to reconnect with nature, is actually just to get some work done. Because I'm a, I'm a master at procrastination. It's one of my most elite skills. <laughs> so sometimes there's no better way than just completely eliminating distractions and being somewhere like this where you can pull open, <clears throat> pull out the laptop. <sighs> and get to work with nothing but the sound of insects for company. Cheers. I think it's time for a fire. It's getting a little chilly out of here. dry off some of this wood that was left out for me. Oh yeah. Been trying my hand at a bit of <laughs> poetry writing this afternoon. Which is interesting. But I'm getting hungry. So, I think it is time to start thinking.
thinking about dinner. Cheerios. Get it. Um, oh, gas bottle. Um, we should probably fast forward this because it'll be boring. Queensland time, 6.30 local time, about right, hopefully there's enough gas in this gas bottle, <laughs> anyway, having burgers for dinner, so some avocado, some cod lettuce, cheese, that's, that's spaghetti bolognese, and some burgers, so, Bush Master Chef. Let's go. We have towels. I mean, come on. Can you really get much better than this? I don't know. This is pretty good. One thing I will say is vlogging while cooking, doing anything really, is really freaking hard. <laughs> kind of forgot how hard this is. You gotta think so many steps ahead. I mean, I'm, there's so many things that I do and I'm like, shit, I should have filmed that. Oh well. At the end of the day, this is just for fun anyway. So, you'll forgive me. <laughs> uh, some avo. Yeah, we'll, we'll check back in when uh, when this bad boy is done. Voila! Done. We'll place that on there. Grab another cheese because double cheese. Why not? Miracle. <laughs> um, <laughs> and. Um, lettuce. How am I going to do this with one hand? I'm not. So, yeah. I'm going to go eat this now. So, uh, cheers. So, dinner was excellent. Thanks for asking. This view is excellent. Thanks for asking. And like I said before, I just love how time slows down. I've been sitting here now after digesting my dinner, staring out at this beautiful, beautiful mountain. You know, you know the one. Um, <clears throat> and watching the light, you know, reflect off it differently as the sun goes down. And it's just stunning. And time is just moving so slowly. It's, it's incredible. It really is. <clears throat> So, plan for the evening is just finish my Henninger, 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 Frank Lager from Frankfurt. Um, not a big drinker, but I do enjoy a good lager from time to time. I like trying new things too, as you know, the whole point of this. <laughs> But yeah, not too much. Watch the sun go down, sit by the fire for a bit. Maybe read if... Eh, I might read in the morning, we'll see how we go. 
and then hit the hay nice and early. I, I want to get a nice early night, wake up really early, watch sunrise, feel real nice and fresh, brew a coffee. Oh, tell you what, I am looking forward to that. I am looking forward to that very, very much. So I will keep you informed if anything changes. Well, this is going to be me for the evening. I'm going to check off my phone now and spend the last bit of the night or preparing for the night away from the screen. Just thought I'd do a quick check-in, show you guys the sunset that's going on behind me. Pretty gorgeous. So, yeah, I guess I'll see you bright and early. this idea last night as I was drifting off to sleep about potentially reigniting my podcasting but do it a little differently because I miss those chats I had some really great chats when I had my old podcast and I'm a conversationalist I love I love that stuff so the idea is that I would bring my gear with me when I go on these adventures and find interesting people to talk to on the way. Potentially even podcast with friends if I'm camping with friends or even just a solo cast. Whatever strikes my fancy or feels right at the time. But I thought that could be really cool to film in places like this. There's not very many more inspiring places to have a really in-depth, interesting conversation with somebody. Hey, you up? <laughs> and now, did you hear my idea? I am now. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just telling no, everybody yeah, about this idea. Yeah. The po did here. podcast. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah, yeah a great idea. Let's do it then. Let's. I going to sleep now. Let's go. So, it is officially the best part of the day now because. Coffee time. Oh, yes. <sighs> Bush coffee style. Don't have a lot of coffee, which is a little annoying, but oh well. Uh, we will make do. 
plan for today. I have been told that there's a nice little dam just over there behind you guys. Even a kayak or something down there. So I might go and check that out at some stage. Um, after that, I would like to get a bit of reading done reading a really good book at the moment I'll show you later that um, I'm working through doing the exercises as I go which is not something I've often done in the past but I'm finding it really rewarding so I'll tackle a bit of that later on and aside from that I think we'll just see what happens. So I'll uh, chat to you when this is done. Well, <clears throat> coffee did its job. <laughs> I was just thinking while I was on the John that um, I never, I don't really understand the the distaste for shitting in the woods, so to speak. I find it it's the cleanest environment you could you could <laughs> you could possibly want. You know, many people I've talked to about camping have said, oh, you know, do they have toilets? You know, like, I mean, these things, these drop dunnies, oh, I'd much rather squat in the bush. They're gross. And these ones, there's ones here, these aren't too bad. They're pretty good, to be honest, but some of them are disgusting and they stink. Most camp toilets at campsites are gross, to be fair. What's wrong with finding yourself a little clearing, digging a hole and doing your business in peace with a beautiful view and your body's not even touching anything. Yeah, I don't get it. That's better in my eyes. <laughs> I do believe it's time for another adventure. Onwards. made it down to this gorgeous little place, Misty Mountain Dam, and I think it might be about time for a bit of handstand training. Second thoughts, I might save that for back at camp where I can warm up because that, that sucks. <laughs> That's where I want to be right now. So if we just go three, 
two, one, and we're back. That is a whole lot easier and saves the feet. <laughs> anyway, I think it is time for some breakfast. Worked up an appetite by now, so let's get that on. And here are the Cheerios, as promised. <laughs> the most satisfying breakfast, but it'll do. It's easy. So, plan from here, finish Brecky, probably do a bit of reading, a bit of working on my book, and then I might actually record a bit of an introduction to this new podcast concept. And then by then, it'll probably be around about time to start thinking about packing up and heading off as much as I hate to say that. Um... It is Sunday, Sunday duties call. So I think, um, yeah, head home and maybe even make a start on editing this. So I'm quite looking forward to that as well. Anyway, time to chow down. So this book I was talking about uh, is this one. It's called No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. Um, it's excellent. Really, really, really good. Um, one of those books that I, for me personally feels like it was written for me, uh, which is always when you know you found a good one. I've written a little sort of introduction thing for it I'd like to tell you about it because I wanted to get the words right. Um, basically, it's written on the preface that young men these days are often raised without adequate healthy male role models or any real rite of passage. Uh, our fathers are often absent, away at work or uninterested in parenting and we're surrounded by the female dominated education industry during our most form formative years. Um, Dr. Glover noticed a pattern both in himself and um, in his male clients in therapy of people pleasing and, and you know, pushovers in a sense that prompted the writing of this book. Um, the introduction begins with five decades of dramatic social change and monumental shifts in the traditional family have created a breed of men who have been conditioned to seek the approval of others. These men are called nice guys. Nice guys are concerned about looking good and doing it right. They are happiest when they are making others happy. Nice guys avoid conflict like the plague and will go to great lengths to avoid upsetting anyone. In general, nice guys are peaceful and generous. Nice guys are especially concerned about pleasing women and being different from other men. In a nutshell, nice guys believe that if they are good, giving and caring, they will in return be happy, loved and fulfilled. Sound too good to be true? It is. And I know for me, this all rings very true and resonates very strongly. So if any of that resonated for you, I highly, highly recommend getting yourself a copy of this and working through the exercises in it as well. Yeah. So, what's next? <laughs> Just to append to that previous message, I, I was thinking about my childhood and how little of it I remember. I have very, very minimal memory of any of my youth. However... I do, the memories I do have almost all tend to involve my father. Whether it was kicking the footy with him or when he made me my first workbench and gave me some tools or when we uh, did building projects together or went on rallies, car rallies and 
sat out in the bush with the fire and watched the cars go past. Whatever it, what, whatever those memories are, they usually always involve the old man. So I think it goes to show how important that time is for a young, a young lad, and how important the role of a father really is. So yeah, like I said, good book, worth a read. So just filmed a little podcast intro video here with that gorgeous background. Um, down here, looking pretty good, I think. So yeah, that'll be up on YouTube soon, I guess. And we will go from there. Should be fun. We're done, we're packed up. Spot's empty. Probably can't see it from here. Time to hit the road. That was an amazing, amazing time. I might try and find somewhere to stop off for a quick swim on the way back. Um, see how we go. But otherwise, beeline home. Thanks for coming along. Mm-hmm.